Vroom, vroom. On the 2nd of January, and we got some bad news, I'm afraid. Our cat was ill, he's been ill for a couple of weeks. He's been to the vet three times, and he had a lot of fluid. So we took him to the vet, and the vet said, well, the only thing we can do is try and drain the fluid. Anyway, we left him with the vet, and uh, they had a go at draining the fluid, and I'm afraid the poor old cat didn't make it. So we've lost our cat, really which is very sad, everybody's sad, but there we are, that's, that's life I suppose, we're all going to go one day. So that's, that's the sad news. The good news is we're back to work. Um, and over the Christmas break, I came down here, because you know I don't like Christmas. So I've made the exhaust, the pipe that goes, I tried to fit the exhaust manifold that one of our followers gave us. But unfortunately, there was no room for it. And I bent it about and did all sorts of things. It's here. We went to the trouble of making that bit. And as you can see, I've heated it up and moved it and everything. But there was no way I could get a real sensible clearance for the rubber universal joint. So, so that was that. And then I was reading that one of our followers who'd worked at the competition department said, oh, we found with 850s, having a small exhaust seemed to work better. So that was enough for, to tip the scales for me to go back to the original setup. So anyway, that's what I've done. But I've made the bore of the exhaust slightly longer. I had to fill it with sand and bend it round 90 degrees, right drama, getting under there and getting out and getting under, but anyway, I've done it. And I've made a different job for the, just here. What I did was I made a, a flange to go on there and I cut it, put it on, and then MIG welded it up. So I've now got two screws there 
and truth goes come through. So there is a little bit of clearance there, a little bit of compliance. So it might work good, I don't know, we'll see. So that's it, and then the exhaust out the back, I couldn't get a silencer, I mean I probably could have got one, but you know me, I don't like spending any money in this, I have to. <coughs> so I made one up from a Ferrari, <coughs> end that goes on a Ferrari, and it looks pretty good. Might be a bit noisy, but as John said, well, we're supposed to be doing, building a boy racer. And I said, no, not actually. I think it's an old boy racer. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. If it's silly, we'll have to do something, obviously. So now that brings me to fitting the cards. So I've fitted the cards, but we've got some very nice original type material for collecting them. But if we put them on there, in the right, you know, with the three screws, it's impossible. So anyway, what we're going to do, we took that off, I've knocked the lugs off, and John has got a machine, a register on there, which he's done on that one. And then we're going to make a ring with three holes in it so that you can put that on there, put the ring on, put the three screws in, and then you can swivel that anywhere you like. So, we can make that line up with that nicely. And then that one line up with that one nicely. So that will go like that, and then I've got another little short one, which is here, that will go on there. And it'll look sort of proper, really. I've made the um, choke cables up, going, you know, coming from the Speedwell look-alike choke thing into a double, which is them. So that's going to work nicely. And I've sorted that out. This is an original piece which I heated up, bent the other way, silver soldered that from this side to that side. And then the problem then was the spring. But I made a very nice bracket that comes down and round there, and there's the spring there. And then the other side, I thought while I'm at it, I'll put a spring on both throttles because you never know, they always. If you go to any kind of scrutiny, you know, you must have a spring on the throttle. And that one goes down to the bolt that used to hold the fuel pump, which they never had on an 850 anyway. So anyway, so I've used the bolt and that works nicely. So that all works really good. And um, that's it really. So it'd be very nice to be able to position that anywhere we like to be able to use this original type stuff to look really good. Those are going to work the choke. And that's it really, we're nearly there. Now this here, I didn't like the look of this pipe coming over the engine like that. So I had this in stock. So what we did was, we silver soldered that onto the original um, tap. And that goes on there like that. And then the plan is, is to get a slightly longer one of these, and that's gonna go up there like that, and come across and join onto there, so that it's not dragging all across here. So that's as far as I've got, really. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take it all off. John's gonna do that little bit of machining, and make it so we can put that anywhere. And then I'm going to check it all, tighten it all up, and then we're almost, I've got to get a longer bit of that, which I'll get from um, mini spares. Um, we'll, we'll be able to start it up and rev it up and see how much noise we've got. But anyway, so that's that. We've got the doors on. Um, haven't put the trim on the inside yet. Um, and that's it, really. 
So, so this is a, an update, but obviously we're going to do a lot more before we put this out, because by then I'm hopefully we'll have it running. I've got to get the wheels painted, I'm going to get John on that, I don't think we'll get them done, we want to get it done. Got to get some tyres though, so I must speak to Julian. Um, and that's it. We're hoping, we're hoping to get a new top for the glass washer bottle, which is worth nearly as much as the car, I think. Um, but this is an original one, but as you can see, it's very rusty. So hopefully the mini spares, um, we've spoken to the 59 Reddish store anyway, Susan said, Susie sent him a message. So hopefully we might hear something from him. And then we can connect all that up. But we're going to have to get a, a, a non-return valve. But other than that, we're on it. This is a single carburetor manifold. We can cut the manifold bit off, you know, with the carburetor. And this is what um, Speedwell did, apparently. But I've never had any luck with this joint here, you know, with the clamp and the two bolts. So what I did was I've made up this flange and I cut it there, opened it up, bent it round and then migged it up so it's over the bit where the exhaust mounts. So then I made a new exhaust pipe here and, and then put a flange on that and then I've got a set of springs here so that's got like a little bit of movement and really I just copied the standard thing which I'll go and get actually. This is roughly what I've copied because I had one of these on my Vauxhall Nova and we, we actually made it in the place at Greenford because we were at Greenford in them days. And I find that, that having that little bit of movement on obviously it doesn't move at all much, but it doesn't break, which is the good thing. So that is what I've done on the original manifold. I've, um, I've made... I've made that flange that goes over that little bit there. So you've got a thing with two bolts in it, and then obviously on the exhaust I've got another one with two bolts, and there's some very heavy springs, so that when the engine moves a little bit, that's got a little bit of compliance. So a lot of aggravation, but it might do something good. And I must say, when we did the Vauxhall Nova, it never gave any trouble. So that was that. But obviously I did all this when everybody was on holiday at Christmas, so we couldn't make a film of me doing it because it's now on the car. The next thing I had to do was obviously make the exhaust pipe. Well, we had the original exhaust pipe, which had all the kinks in it. So I thought, well, you know, obviously I want to make one. And I've made it very slightly bigger. Um, but again, I had to bend it. Well, down at Timothy's place, they fill the they fill the thing up with sand and beat it in, and I've tried all that, and it never seems to work with me. But anyway, this time I made a real big effort. I welded the ends on it, pounded the sand in it, and they reckon you've got to do it till it rings. Anyway, that's what I did. And as it happens, it's turned out quite good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get underneath the car with the GoPro and attempt to take a film that Tanya might be able to make something of, and you can see how I've done it. I've fitted it as I've just told you on this end. Underneath, I've made the exhaust clamp that goes around and fits to the gearbox as original. And then the pipe goes straight back to my sort of bodge up Ferrari type end on the end of the exhaust. So, you know, I said to John, oh, it'd probably be a bit noisy. And he said, well, that's what you're doing, isn't it? You've got to build a boy racer car. So as it happens, it's an old boy racer car. But anyway, We'll see if it's too noisy, we'll have to do something. We can easily put another silencer. So I'll now go with the GoPro and see if I can just make a very quick quick film of it. So there you can see the pipe and it misses the, it misses the uh, rubber universal joint, which the other one didn't. I'm not, where I bent it, it was very, very close. So I'm quite pleased with this bend. It don't look too bad, really. 
you know, getting that pipe round there was not easy. And anyway, that's lovely because that's in the original position. So then the pipe just goes straight back down the car, right to the end to my bunched up Ferrari end pipe, which I cut and altered an angle. Um, but as you can see, the old car looks pretty good. That's the start of button there. All the, you know, all the subframes all painted and everything, and it, you know, it all looks very tidy. Um, so anyway, so now I'll go to the back, and uh, you can see how I've made this pipe. I think it's going to possibly be a bit too noisy, but we'll see. So the pipe just comes along and comes to here, and then we've got my pet thing, which I always do. I use an engine mounting or a very serious rubber. I don't put those silly little ones on. And as you can see, that's a proper rubber thing. You can actually stand on that exhaust and it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't move. It's just an insulation, really. But anyway, we'll see. You know, that might turn out to be all right. And let's face it, you know, we all know that when you've got an exhaust that's a little bit noisy, you just drive it a bit gentler in the town. I might, I might possibly put a slight bend in that and lift it up slightly, which will bring that down a little bit, which won't do any harm. So that's a, another little tweak. But as you can see, it's all very nice. All the, all the brake pipes are all done in the proper steel pipe, which is luckily I had. And that's the adjustable, and that's the adjustable suspension, which we haven't done anything with yet. You know, obviously we've got to set the height, but uh, we haven't done the wheels yet. The new SU pump with the proper connections, I thought I might make a little cover for that, but we'll see in the future. But it's all turned out very nice, I'm very happy with it. And, uh, and, a, and, a, and a new battery box which you can see, and the Notex, the Notex reversing light, which was very fashionable in the day, and that was actually on the car when we bought it. So I don't know whether the old boy needed it to back up or whether he might have done a bit of rallying, I don't know, but it was on the car, so we thought, well, we'll leave it because it's a period thing that they did. Probably never use it, but anyway. So as you can see, it's all turned out lovely underneath. So it's a shame to take it out in the rain and it hasn't stopped raining for weeks. So it's gonna be a little while before we drive it. But anyway, there you are. So, so the next step now will be to talk about the carburettors. Right, so these are the carburettors, which are on a, a aquaplane manifold which I don't know how good an aquaplane manifold is, but it's a miracle when you're doing the carburettors because it's all lovely. So you can set the carburettors up and you can get the everything working nicely and everything in line. It's a really, really nice thing. And then bolt it on the car. Whereas the speed wheel manifolds are separate so they can be all over the shop, really. That's quite a nice thing. Whether it's any good from performance point of view is another question. That bit's a standard bit, which I just altered and bent this way, sort of soldered thing in there. It all seems good. And now, this is our system here, which old t uh, John has made. So we cut the lugs off the, off the, um, we cut those lugs off, and then we machined a register on there, and then John made up these rings, which means that we can move that anywhere we like. So, using a standard bit of pipe, we can make that line up nicely. Whereas, originally, it's it's like there. So, I mean, you can't do anything with that. So that that's turned out really good. So that's going to go on there. That's going to go on there. The throttle linkage is done, and then we've got the speed weld type choke cable which then comes one and then goes into two which we can show them Tanya
as you can see, we've got the doors on, and they, they're quite good. Good enough for a mini. Anyway, this is the cable, which goes down there, and then it goes into a sort of motorcycle thing that turns two cables to go to the thing, and then one cable going in. So when you pull the cable, it pulls both the chokes open which is probably unnecessary, but that's how they did it, so we, we've done it like that. So, so that, um, that comes down to here. These are the two choke cables, and they are going to go one carburetor, two carburetor. So I've already had that on, so we know that's going to be all right. Uh, and then we've got the new pipe coming up here for the... Um, fuel from the back of the car and then because we can turn the float bowl we can line it up nicely with that and go into the other carburetor so that looks like that's going to work quite nice and be quite a good little touch and then I think we already talked about that but that's going to come round and go like that I've got to order a bit more pipe so that's it really Tanya we're up to date I'll get the carburetors on and then we'll start it up and we'll be out of here our noisy exhaust is. And if it's horrible, well, we'll think about putting another silencer in halfway down the pipe. But we're getting close on this. Next thing is to think about getting the wheels painted, speak to Julian about some tyres, and that's it. We're not going to be able to drive it up the road because we're flooded. The drive's flooded. The fields are flooded. It ain't stopped raining for days. I don't want to make all the outside filthy dirty before we even start. So there might be a bit of a lull in this, but we'll get the car finished and you'll see it finished. That's it folks, we got it running, it's got water in it, we got the extra bit of hose and um, I can't believe it but I've just literally pulled the choke out and I've tickled the slow running things a bit and it don't sound that bad but obviously once it's had a good run we can have a good look at it and I'll, I'll check in old David Vizard book what needles it should have because I'm sure it tells you in there for an 8.50 on 8 inch and a quarters but we'll have a look anyway. But I'm quite pleased with that. But needless to say, the dynamo's not charging, but, you know, we can do that, can't we? Um, but that's pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that. It's sounding quite nice. Ticking over. I think that's good. Go around the back, Tanya, and hear the boy racer exhaust, and I'll give it a little rev up. Dynamo's not charging. Oh, uh, yeah, it wants exciting because we've reversed Plary. Oh. I'll get a bit of wine. John says the dynamo's not charging because we reversed the Plarity and it needs, I don't know, something. Exciting, that's the word. It's not breathing at all, look. Obviously changing the piston rings around ain't done that much damage at the moment. Nothing. I'm quite pleased with that, really. And I mean, obviously we've got to put the bonnet on and we've got to wire up, um, put tubes to the washer bottle and, um, and we put the felt on the uh, carpets Got to make a bigger hole for the gear lever, but the grommet is desperate, so I don't know whether you can get those grommets, but we'll have a go. But I'm sure we could think of something. Really, what it wants is something a bit clever there, because there's quite a lot of movement on that um, gear lever, and the grommet looks like it's well extreme, you know? So I think we might do a bit of a modification there. But other than that, I'm absolutely knocked out. Obviously, we've got to lower it. We've got to do the adjustment on the thing. Um, the clutch seems to work, and all the gears seem to work, so that's good. 
so what we do Tanya well we'll finish this one we'll send this one out and then the next one will be finished and driving it up the road right this is just really to complete the mini um, we've got all the inside in it and everything and obviously Christmas and what have you and then the weather's terrible so we've been a bit held up on this but we um, we've we're fitting the lower, you know, we know we've got adjustable suspension. Well, when you have adjustable suspension, the original shock absorber is too long. So obviously if you hit a bump, if you lowered it and put it together, if you hit a bump, it would just be go loose. In other words, the, the rubber cone could even fall out. So what you need is a shorter stroke shock absorber. Well. I managed to buy these on eBay, which were were proper. They're advertised as lowered suspension adjustable rear shock absorbers, and they're in lovely condition, so it was silly not to buy them. But you can see the difference, you see. That's the difference. So obviously when you lower the car and it drops away, it keeps all the suspension parts in tension. So that's what me and John are going to do. We're going to fit these. Now, we haven't got any for the front, but I don't think that's going to hold us up because I don't think you need to lower the front as much as the rear. But obviously, we can get to that one. But I'm pretty panicking, really, to try and get it together, get the bonnet on, start it up, drive it up the road, and then Tanya can send all the stuff that she's done recently, um, and we can get it, on, get it on YouTube. So that's what we're going to do. And then it will be work in progress. And as the weather improves, obviously we'll get it going better and we'll make odd little videos and then and we'll see what happens. But there's a good chance that in the end, we'll take my cylinder head off once we know just how good it is or how bad it is and fit the Speedwell cylinder head. So the final thing, which will probably be in the future now, will be this car being finished with it's Speedwell alloy wheels. Now there's a problem with this because although they're not ridiculously wide, they are slightly wider and I think we're going to need the spacers like on the back of a Cooper S. You know, they're like, they're, in the, they're incorporated in the drum. But we will probably just get spacers. But they're going to have to be half an inch thick, I reckon, so we're going to need longer studs, blah, blah, blah. And we haven't painted them yet, so I thought we could run it round on these wheels because they're, the, they're the welded wheels, not the riveted wheels, so they're good wheels. Um, and it's got very good tyres. So that's another thing that we will do in the future is fit the alloy wheels. So obviously it's, this is going to be this is going to be worked on forever. You know, I mean, we don't even know how it's going to go. We don't know how good the gearbox is, although I think it's pretty good. So we'll see. But anyway, well, this is what we're leading up to. Fitting the rear shockers, adjusting the front suspension, getting the car looking sensible, blowing the tyres up, put the bonnet on, and start it up and drive it. And probably need to adjust the carburetors and the ignition slightly. But um, that would be good, I think. Well, we've got to get the washer bottle working because um, we've got an actual bottle, believe it or not, which was on the car when we got it. But the top is knackered, so we've got a man in the 59 registers make some, or has had them made, and he's sending me one. When we get that, we'll, we'll obviously fix up the washer bottle so that it works. But other than that, it looks good under the bonnet, I think. I mean, quite nice to have a bit of sound deadening between the engine and the speedo. I think we might do something there, but that's in the future. But it ain't leaking oil anywhere, so we honestly did that good. It ain't leaking water. So I'm pleased. I'm very pleased. And we put the Speedwell badge on because, obviously, eventually it'll have the Speedwell head. But I tell you what, I don't think the Speedwell head will be any better, but we'll see. No, it's all turned out very well.
just don't feel that bad and the clutch feels good. But I think we'll know straight away whether it feels any better. But give it some revs and see. Weird noises coming from around the 
call Brett and said, so you can hear her sucking and whatever you. See if you give it a rev, it goes in good. Second gear. Well, I think that's got a bad start. So, so Tanya can now make a bit of a video and show what the other bits we did. And, uh, Looking good, isn't it? Get all the finger marks off it. Get the speedwell wheels on it. I don't think we need to lower it anymore. I think that looks good. Now oh, here comes Susie. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. 